he's the best coach I've ever had. And if you knew how slow I was my freshman year <laughs> compared to now, like you would know like how fast he's made me. And I really owe a lot of that to him. That was the voice of all conference swimmers, Sierra Forbord, talking about Saluki head swim and dive coach Jeff Hansen. Those two were together at Colorado Mesa Division II school in Grand Junction, Colorado. Jeff Hansen, head coach there, now the head coach at SIU, and brought Sierra with them after she was a two-time All-American at the Division II level, and it almost didn't happen. Sierra will get into that a little bit as we get moving here in this conversation, but Coach Hansen, I'm sure... Very pleased that she did. First year results for Sierra at the Division One level, really good. Three school records, part of a couple of relay teams that set records at SIU. A couple of medals at the Missouri Valley Meets last February, and she ended up being first team All-Valley selection after it was all said and done. I'm Connor Onion, and this is the Saluki Standards Podcast, and this is Sierra Forboard. So I want to start here with a, a real tough question uh, okay. is, is what are you jamming out to on the pool deck? What's kind of your go-to playlist when you're getting ready for a race day? Oh, a race day. Um, honestly, I don't listen to a ton of music, which is surprising. I feel like a lot of people do, but um, if I do listen to music, it's usually like some rap <laughs> okay, <laughs> or like- something like, you know, just like hype music just to get me going. But honestly, like I don't have a lot of time in between. It's like usually like my warm up, and then I'm getting changed and then I'm going to the block. So like, I don't really have a lot of time to like listen to a lot of music, but if I do, that's probably what I would choose. Yeah. What else gets you hyped then? If it's, if it's not usually music. Oh man, <laughs> I don't know. My friends always hype me up. So that's always fun. My teammates do that a lot. Um, I think mostly I, I just get hyped by just like being excited to be there, being excited to race and just like see what I can do. Create your own energy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Sure. I want to go back to February day one of the MVC championships. That's where things really started to roll for you guys and your relays, specifically that 200 Bentley relay. Yeah. The anchor of that medley and you yeah. guys, just for people who hadn't heard, you guys were second place to the first three legs. You're on that final fourth leg, and then you come back and win it in those final 25 yeah. yards by three-tenths of a second, kind of a photo finish there. When, when you're going along that final 25, 50 yards there, what did you find inside of you to get to that wall and be the first one to touch? Oh, man. I don't know. I, I saw um... – her coming in the third leg and I saw that it was really close and I knew that this relay was kind of like what was going to set the mood for the whole meet. And so I was like, Oh man, like, this is it. This is, <laughs> I got to do it. And honestly though, like during the whole 50, I literally kind of just like everything kind of goes away and I don't really pay attention to a lot of what's going on. And so I just kind of just swim and, Honestly, when I touched the wall, I didn't even know we won until like, I don't know, a minute later where I like everyone's screaming and a lot of stuff was happening. So I didn't even know we won until I like had time to look at the touch or at the scoreboard. So, but I don't know. I think it was just the motivation hearing my teammates scream on the side of the pool and yeah. I noticed that. I watched it back again today. I had seen the video several times of you guys winning that relay, but you touched the wall. We can tell from that high angle that you're in there first, but it almost seemed like you were kind of looking around. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know what was happening. (laughs) I was like, I touched because it was so close. I knew it was so close because that girl was right next to me on um, Missouri State. And so I was like, I had no idea. And I, um, Sarah, the breast joker she hugged me and I was like I'm assuming we won but <laughs> I think so and I really didn't even know until I looked so yeah when you're in the pool I mean are you peeking out of the corner of your eye to look at the other lanes or are you just tunnel vision straight ahead the entire time 
Um, it kind of depends on the race. For like the 50, I would say I'm more just like tunnel vision of like just going and like trying to get to the wall. Um, cause on a 50, you know, you don't really have time to like do much. So it's just like do whatever you can to get there, get to the wall as fast as you can. But I would say more for like my 200 race, I definitely like can see people more and definitely like that's more of a race where I'll like look and see where people are at. And, um, but yeah, honestly, when I'm swimming, it's just kind of like, tunnel vision a lot of the time and I don't even remember it a lot of the time <laughs> when you guys won that 200 medley and you had the big comeback did that feel like one of your best swims when you're in the water yeah that swim felt really good it was obviously it was like the fastest relay split I had ever gone um so that was really exciting I had finally gone um a 22 which was like a really big deal for me because I never would have thought I would go that fast. So that was really cool. Um, and yeah, it felt really good finishing. Obviously I was tired, but, um, it was definitely a good race and felt good. That's gotta be rewarding to have the results match up with the feel. You felt like you swam the best and then you win the race and you set a school record. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a really cool feeling and, um, it's nice to, you know, have all your hard work pay off. So, and to see all that, like not even just me, but like with the whole, that whole relay, like it was really cool. Like I know all of us were working our butts off, so it was cool to see that pay off and win and, um, you know, like kind of just see us all work together and, um, show our coaches what we can do you're in the unique spot too, being the anchor that you get to kind of see everything unfold before you actually get in the water. Yeah. As as you're sitting there or standing there on those first three legs, what's that adrenaline like? Oh yeah. It's nerve wracking for sure. It's definitely like you see, you know, like going back and forth, just like the teams like, Oh, this person's ahead. And then this person's ahead. So it's nerve wracking for sure. And then, you you know, like as the anchor, like, you know, you're, you're it, like you're the last one. And so it kind of comes down all on me, but honestly, I kind of like that. I like that kind of adrenaline. I like that kind of rush. And so that, I think that's honestly the reason I went that, that fast that day was if I didn't have that adrenaline, I don't think I would have. So is there a little bit of self-control you have to have not to get too hyped up too early so you so you oh, don't burn out? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, definitely. If you get rid of all that hype before you race, then it's kind of pointless. So you definitely have to like, I don't know, for me, I have to try not to get too nervous because there's a point of where being nervous for me is good until it's too much and then I overthink and then it doesn't go as well as I want it to. So like there's a certain limit of how much like hype and how much nervousness I need to like do well. How do you calm yourself in those moments? Um, you know, I usually talk to my coach and he usually is pretty good at reassuring me and I just also have to think of like, okay, Sierra, like you've swam this like hundreds of times you can do this, like, you know, and it's, um, I, I just also need to like, or I also just think of like relying on my training. Like you've trained for this, you can do this. Like don't overthink it, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Just talking to myself and not trying not to get in my head and, um, my coach, being there for me is always really helpful too. And my friends and my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> right. Speaking of your training though, you said that's one of the best swims that you had in, in that event. You felt really good about oh, it. But... Do you hear that? I'm so sorry. Yeah. What is that? Is that wind? That was, that was a car. I couldn't hear you. Oh my, <laughs> sorry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Can you repeat that? So, yeah. Somebody needs to go to the auto shop. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you were talking about, how that felt like one of your best swims when you guys set that school yeah. record. But what about collectively as a unit, you're 
your three teammates before you kept you in it, had you within striking distance. Was was that one of the better runs that, that you guys had, or had you gone faster in training even? Um, I think that was probably one of our best swims for sure. Um, yeah, I think that we all felt really good that day, and it was – it was exciting too, just like that, that first day, I think we were all really excited. And so it makes it that much better just swimming it that first race, that first relay. And, um, yeah, I think it was good for all of us. What'd you do with the medal? The medal? They're actually hanging up in my room right now. <laughs> you got a nice little collection of them, don't you? I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, and I have a, quite a few from, um, my old school too. So they're all hanging up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were, um, two time division two, all American Colorado Mesa, a couple years there before you came to SIU with coach Hanson. Mm -hmm. How do you think swimming D two prepared you for making the jump to division one? Um, I think it prepared me a lot, honestly, that, um, that D two school was one of the higher D two schools. And, Honestly, like coming here wasn't as big of a change as I thought it would be. Um, like you would think, honestly, when I was choosing a school, I was like, I don't want to go D1 because I was also wanted to focus on my school a lot. And I was like, well, if I go D1, they're not going to care about my school, which isn't true at all that I now realize. But um, so I always thought like D1 is all about training. I'm not going to have time for anything, blah, blah, blah. But um, the D2 school I went to was, I wouldn't say there was much of a difference with the training and all that stuff, but that also might have to do with me having the same coach as well. So I think that that helped. Um, but it definitely prepared me a lot. Like there wasn't any huge changes that I had to adjust to. Yeah, that was the piece I left out was that, you swam for your current coach at SIU, Coach yeah. Hanson. He he was at Colorado Mesa, coached you, comes here, you come with. Why did you come with? Well, I actually was, like, debating on whether or not I was even going to continue to swim. Um, that, that was just for, like, personal reasons. And um, I was – I had a whole different plan of um, – not going to Colorado Mesa anymore at all. And I was just going to go some, like go to school somewhere else in Colorado. Um, but then Jeff, he ended up finding out that I was, um, planning on maybe not swimming anymore. And, um, so then as soon as I was also still debating about the whole swimming thing. So I was like, well, maybe I'll go into the transfer portal and see what happens. Like maybe, someone like a coach will reach out and like, I'll find somewhere I want to go. Um, and then Jeff reached out to me and, um, he offered me a scholarship here and basically was like, I really want you to come swim with like swim with me here. And, um, it was hard because I was still, you know, I was like, ah, I don't know, because I just didn't know. I wanted to swim anymore and I'm so glad that I continued to keep swimming and came here and still trained with Jeff and um a big part of me not wanting to swim actually had to do with Jeff leaving the team because I was like well I don't want to go swim for anyone else and then he finally he reached out to me and so I was like okay I guess I gotta do this <laughs> so well, that says a lot about the relationship he has with the swimmers. If he yeah. didn't want to swim for anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff is, he's the best coach I've ever had. And, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. So he's very, he's like the coach that I've ever, like I've been the closest to. And I know like how much he cares about his swimmers and, um, especially what he's done for me, like with my swimming and my progress in swimming. Like if you knew how slow I was my freshman year <laughs> compared to now, like you would know like how fast he's made me. And I really owe a lot of that to him. 
How old were you when you started swimming? Uh, when I competitively when I was four, um, but I did like swim lessons when I was like three, I think. Okay, so you had been swimming for almost twenty years, and you had achieved at a really high level, being an all American. I mean, how much did it weigh on you that you you might just walk away and not do it again? It was a lot. I mean, it was definitely a hard decision. Of, and I was completely like, I don't know what to do. Um, because it was a lot of it had to do with the school I was at too. I just like, wasn't, I didn't feel like it was like the right fit for me, like the school in general. And then when it was like, Oh, and then on top of that, my coach was leaving. And then I was, I was kind of at a point where I was like, I, in my life, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I don't know. And I was kind of leaning towards maybe just like not swimming would just be easier. And then, um, and then Jeff reached out and it was kind of like a sign of like, okay, I'm, I need to keep swimming. <laughs> and then a year later, you're winning relays, setting school records at yeah. an even higher level. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely it was a good decision. <laughs> How has coming to SIU kind of helped shape some of those doubts that you had about what you wanted to do? Do you have more clarity now? Oh yeah, for sure. I, uh, SIU has been great. Like I have never felt like more like at home with a group of people. And, um, I never really felt that at my old school, I guess. And so it's super cool. Like that I got to come here and meet all these amazing people, have all these great coaches and just like have a really cool community. Um, and then just feel like I fit in so well here and so much better than I did at my old school. And then like make these relationships with my teammates and to be like voted team captain after just one year of being here is like really special to me. And so, um, yeah, like SIU is really just like, changed everything for me so yeah was there kind of an aha moment where you knew that it was going to work and that you would fit in yeah really when I when I came here on my like I came on a recruiting trip like not even a, I think it was like a couple weeks before um school started like it was way last minute when I decided I was going to come here it was like I think I decided like two weeks before school started and I had nowhere to live, but that's another story. But, um, yeah, even on my recruiting trip, like the people here, like I just instantly kind of clicked with them. And, um, so I, that's when I, I kind of just had a feeling when honestly, I was like, these people are great. I fit in well, I click with these people and I was just kind of like, uh, I don't know. It was a big risk of like, I'm going to pack up my bags and move to Illinois. And I don't know anyone besides Jeff, but I just decided to do it. And it was a, I think it was a really good decision for me. So. All right. Are you willing to share the whole other story with us? You, you piqued my interest a little bit. It sounded like it was a little bit of a rough beginning. Oh yeah. I just, I did not, I had no idea what I was doing when I, I like came here on my trip and then couple days after that, I was like, all right, I'm just going to do it. And then I was like, well, I have nowhere to live. And so then, um, like everybody already had their roommates on the team. And then I, um, I ended up living with two boys actually all of last year. So that was a first for me. Cause I had always lived with girls, but I was like, well, I have nowhere else to live. So now I'm going to live with these two guys on the team, but it ended up fine. It was, it was a fun time, but I'm back to living with girls now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was, yeah, that was kind of a mess. Like we had nowhere to live and it was um, me and two other transfers on the team. And so we were like frantically trying to find somewhere. Um, but yeah, it was kind of funny. It all worked out though. Fine. <laughs> Have you ever seen the show new girl? Yeah. Was was there a little bit of an element of you were Zoe Deschanel living with all guys? Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit. Honestly, it was more like it was just a struggle to live with uh, 
two messy people. <laughs> that, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I, I got to think that you being so well-traveled helped you uh, assimilate. I mean, do you, you grow up in the, the capital of Washington and Olympia. You go to Grand Junction, Colorado, first year of first couple years of college. And now halfway across the country to Illinois, um, w- what have you noticed culturally from being out West, being in Colorado, now to Illinois? Ooh, well, I don't know. They're all very different places. Like, I personally love Colorado. And if anything, I think that's where I'll end up, honestly. But um, I don't know. Illinois is very – when I came here – I noticed that people are like really, really nice in Carbondale. I don't know, (laughs) like compared to where I lived in um, Colorado, I came here and everyone, like everyone says hi, everyone is super nice. And then like Colorado was not like that at all. So I was like, whoa, this is kind of weird. But I think the biggest difference between them is just like the, the kind of scenery that you see, you know, like, I personally kind of, sometimes I miss seeing the mountains and stuff. Um, Illinois is very, it's pretty, but very different. And um, yeah. We make up for how flat it is with our charm, hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's what I thought you were going to say initially. Illinois is very flat. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It definitely (laughs) is. But there are pretty places for sure. Like I've been to like Inspiration Point, Garden of the Gods, and those places are beautiful. Just a different kind of beautiful. For sure. For when sure. you like go to Grand Junction or like Denver, like you see the cool mountains and like the sunsets are incredible in Colorado. I don't know if you've ever been there, but um, yeah. And then Washington, it has everything. It has the mountains. It has the water. It has all that. So that place is super cool too. I've I've been to Colorado. I've never been to Washington though. And just, I mean, I've seen pictures online of the state capital of Washington where you grew up, but yeah. looks like you're kind of in that like Southern Puget Sound region, a lot yeah. of water, a lot of scenery, like you're talking about. What's, what's your favorite part of your hometown? Ooh, oh my gosh. Well, you know, Seattle's always fun, even though, I mean, that's not like really where I, live I guess it's a little like an hour away but Seattle is super fun like there's a lot of fun things to do the Space Needle and like gift shopping and Pike's Place and so that's super fun to go and do all those fun things um my favorite thing about my hometown there's a in Olympia there is a place called Boston Harbor Marina and it's like the cutest little town and it has um it has like a little shop and you can go um down by the water and it has all the boats there and you can go like paddle boarding there. I think that's probably one of my favorite places in Olympia. So if you ever go, check out Boston Harbor. <laughs> a post COVID trip booked right now. Yes. yes. <laughs> that place is so pretty. And it has like you can watch the sunset and sit on the water and you can go in the little shop and like get ice cream and cookies and they have like live music sometimes. So it's really fun. Beautiful. Yeah. With all that water around, do you ever do any open water swimming or did you? No, I actually never did. I have never been open water swimming actually. And I don't know. It might be just cause it's, it's like pretty cold in the water. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I don't know if I would even like that, to be honest. Like when we went to Mexico this past or like last year in December or was that January for winter break? But um, we went and we had the option to do open water. And I was like, oh, that kind of scares me. (laughs) Like all that stuff. I don't know. Like I feel like it would freak me out. I would want to know what's below me. Yeah. Yeah. And then if I saw something, I feel like that would like scare me. And then, <laughs> then, you, have, then you have PTSD when you get in the pool. <laughs> yeah. I also have like shoulder problems. And so 
it's kind of hard for me to do like long distances. Um, so like an open water, I don't know if that would go very well with my shoulder. So yeah. 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 Good. Good reasons not to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just to wrap things up. Um, you know, you're, you're a senior, um, you know, you'll, you'll graduate somewhat soon as hard as that is to believe I'm sure, but what do you have planned for the future? Well, unfortunately I'm not actually going to be graduating when I'm supposed to be, which is kind of sad because I'm in the nursing program. So I'll be in the nursing program for, um, this year. And then I have two more years on top of that. So that's what I'll be doing. And then, um, after I graduate from the nursing program, I'll probably try and get a job. Um, eventually I want to, I think I'll try and be a travel nurse for a little bit. And then eventually I want to, um, like settle down in somewhere, um, that I like and work with little kids. So very cool. Yeah. So the, the traveling, isn't just a coincidence. That's, that's kind of a part of you. <laughs> yeah. I like traveling and there, I don't, I feel like I don't get to do it enough. And so I feel like I would love to go see like different places and go, um, experience new people and new things. And I feel like travel nurse is the best way to do it. <laughs> Helping people along the way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, hey, I'm glad this uh, finally worked out. I know we, uh, we we couldn't link up on the schedule at, at one point, but um, it was worth the wait. I really uh, enjoyed our conversation and appreciate you sharing with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, can't wait to see you swim again. Thanks so much, Sierra. Yeah, thank you.